Hello everyone. I thought I would show my uh, squid uh, caching server uh, an ad blocker um, for the Raspberry Pi B Plus. Now this is um, this Raspberry Pi B Plus has already been configured. It actually has um, it's been, the locale has been set. The static IP address has been set. Um, it's actually um, all the way up to date with um, the repository, the repositories, and the the um, the software and the firmware. So, um, first step, uh, step one, uh, sudo aptitude install squid three, and then sudo aptitude install add zapper. So we do those. Are, this is the first line of defense. We'll talk about the second one in just a minute. Um, so those two products are installed, or two applications are installed, and then we actually stop services. So we stop Squid 3 services, and then uh, the next step, step two, uh, we'd actually, um, we're, we're going to replace the entire squid.comp file, and that's basically going to replace it, um, and you can do your research after this is up and going on the squid.comp file that I'm going to provide. So you'll, inside Etsy, Squ um, inside Etsy, so we, uh, cd forward slash etc forward slash squid3, um, there's a squid.comp file that I would provide, and you're going to basically run the move command here and move it to squid.comp underscore old. So you'll, you'll just take the default file and put it out of the way for now. Um, the things that you'll have to change in my file are the ACL uh, local net source, the cache manager, which would be your IP or your email address. Um, it's space and then the email address and then DNS underscore name servers space and then the IP address of your router. So it would look like that. So it would be my my router, for instance, it would be ten dot zero dot one dot whatever. So that would be my router. Um, yours may look like 192.168.1.1, for instance. That's in most circumstances. That's what routers, uh, home routers, are uh, defaulted to. Um, and then visible host name. The visible host name is going to be the actual uh, name of the Raspberry Pi. So Pi One, for instance, that would be the name, the host name of the Pi. So that's what you would change inside Etsy Squid 3 and squid.comp file. Now, um, moving on to step three, I would have you go to the top of the root spool. So at the top of the tree, so you type cd space and then forward slash, like so. And that would take you to the top of the tree. And if I do a ls here, there's a folder called cache. And that is what we're going to do is we're going to remove the old cache because when you installed the squid actually started and it created cache. So you would remove the old cache location and make a new one called make dir forward slash cache. And then after you made the, the directory called cache, you would change ownership and you would give the user proxy and the group proxy privileges to the cache location. So... Uh, if I type ls uh, hyphen l, you'll see that cache has user and group privileges to the cache location. So moving on, so we we've, we've created the cache location, we've done the installation and looked at what we would possibly change inside the uh, squid.conf location. Moving to step four, this is the second layer of ad blocking. So we would make a directory in the installation uh, path of squid. So if we go inside there, and we look, there's an actual block folder. I've, that's it. So there's the block location, block folder. And if you see it's green, it's because it's, it's got full privileges inside that folder. Next. Um, step five, if I'm providing the squid.comp file, 
you may not have to do step five unless you change the location of your um, your block folder. If you change the location of your block folder um, or um, or didn't use my squid.com file for this, you would have to change the, this in your squid.com file. So all in all intents and purposes for this tutorial, we're actually going to skip step five. Moving on to step six, once you, you would go, you'd um, go inside the block folder. So cd forward slash block, Oops, cd um, block, and then if I type pwd, the path of the block folder should be inside Etsy Squid 3 block. And if I do an ls here, there's an add underscore block doc text. That is um, the list. So is what we would do is we'd run this entire command that's highlighted and it'd do a wget hyphen o and it would put that file from this web address inside add block uh, inside the block folder and call it add underscore block dot text for you. So you just copy the whole thing and it will put it where it needs to be. Um, and there it is. And if you want to see what the file looks like, if I do a cat and then add, and then it, there's the the domains associated with advertising companies that it would block. Um, so you would just run this section right here. And then the rest of it will come back to. The next step, seven, um, we'd go inside the squid installation directory. So cd space forward slash etsy forward slash squid3. And we'd create a, um, we'd nano. We'd nano, sudo nano uh, fetch underscore block list dot sh. So if we go inside there, you'll see um, there's a fetch underscore block underscore list dot sh. And it's what that does is that's actually going to be this entire bash file. And it's going to pull this, this is going to be a scheduled task, and it's going to pull this, this uh, text file, this plain text file, uh, into this uh, lo into the block folder every day at 6 a.m. after we finish. So you would go inside CD Etsy Squid 3 uh, and then you sudo nano and then you create this file in the in the default installation directory of squid and then you give it re read and write privileges and then here is cron your cron tab that would actually pull this file at 6 a.m. every morning. So it's inside cron tab file that you would put at the bottom would be forward slash etsy forward slash cron tab. So if we go into that cron tab location, so sudo nano here's the file. Notice the pound sign at the end. So here at 6 a.m. It will pull that scheduled task, pull that file from this web server here, and drop it onto the Pi. So it would update your AdBlock server list. You have so that this would be your second line of defense. So if you control X out of here, um, and th that's basically it. So um, it creates a caching. This is a caching proxy server. Um, that actually stores cache into the cache folder at the top of the tree. Um, it has ad zapper that it's linked to, but it's also linked to this updated list. Um, kind of like easy list for AdBlock Plus for your browser. So it would do it at the Pi. Now, after we got all of this information configured, uh, to uh, in Windows it would be internet options, and then on my Mac, I would have that actually set to, um, um, net, so network and system preferences, advanced, and then proxies, and see here I have web proxy, and then the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, and then the default port, which would be the same for you, which would be 3128, 
and I have it configured for web proxy HTTP and secure pro web proxy HTTPS and it doesn't require username and password because it only allows the local network to touch the pie so you can cancel that hopefully you found this this tutorial interesting um, if you have any questions please leave them at the comment below um, if you like what you saw today please subscribe and guys have a good day